Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Countdown to Infinity, a Marvel's Avengers podcast. We talk all things Marvel Cinematic Universe, the movies, the shows on Disney Plus, and everything in between. Yep. We're so pumped because in just a couple of days, we'll be able to talk about something new from the MCU, and that's the series Loki, streaming on Disney Plus June 9th. Yes. And so you're going to see the schedule kind of shift. Our episodes are going to come out, I believe, on Friday. Our Looking at Loki uh, series will come out on Friday instead of Monday. So next Monday, if you don't see an episode, it may just be because we've, we've switched it up. Yep. So this is just kind of a reminder episode. We're going to talk some listener mail. And then if we've got time, we're going to take a quiz, a fun quiz. But my name is Manuel. Oh, my name is Sophia. Are you excited for the Loki show? You know, the interesting, it's interesting because the interesting there, right? Um, (laughs) It's interesting because I felt so stoked for it. And now that we're, we finally reached the point that it's coming out. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I feel like, Let it happen. Yeah, like I'm really relaxed. And, <laughs> but I feel like once I see, like if we watched uh, Wanda and like how they set up, oh, because they just released the sneak peeks or like the, not sneak peeks, but like the, what is it? The callbacks to like how Loki has performed yeah. throughout the entire MCU. The re- just kind of his whole Recaps, arc. That's what it is. Yeah. And he's one of the oldest characters. So mm-hmm. And so like that, seeing that right before is getting get me pumped for sure just yeah. like it did with wanda and i'm excited because we're exploring a new world so reviews yeah the embargo has lifted so a lot of folks are able to talk about what they've seen in the first two episodes already and uh it's a lot of really good things people are excited i think owen wilson does a fantastic job wow wow and everyone <laughs> wants more it seems like there's quite a bit of setup Mm-hmm. In the first couple episodes, which mm-hmm. just makes sense because it's time travel yes. and a brand new organization. You can't just jump into that with no explanation. You can't just jump into you it, dive set it into up. it. Where's he coming from? Where's he going? But apparently, there's a lot of promise, and I'm I'm excited to to talk about them episode by episode. Yeah, but, it's gonna it's gonna blow our minds. Yeah, I'm so sure. Loki mm-hmm. streaming on Wednesday, and I think he's one of my favorite bad guy good characters. Guy. Yeah, good guy bad guys. Yeah, they won't <laughs> let him die either because nah. he did die a couple of times yes. and and or at least like you know kind of thrown off into oblivion and then and he keeps coming back. People were pissed. Yeah, so they brought him back. And remember, he gave that sacrifice uh, with 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 uh, uh, yeah with, with, with for his brother oh, and for everyone. Thor. Yeah, in um mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. in in uh shit. Ragnarok. No, no. Uh, uh fuck. Endgame. Oh. There we go. Uh, really, Infinity War, if we're thinking about it. But yeah, so it's it's really exciting to see him back. And who knows? He may be back forever, huh? I mean... A lot of time travel that we can Yeah, get he into. can always just come back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah Like yeah. in a different dimension or something. We'll have to see. Um, we, we, so the other thing that... Before we dive into your listener mail, the other thing... The other big news in the MCU is this weekend was the first weekend that Marvel's Avengers Campus has been open at Disneyland. Oh my gosh. So exciting. That was insane. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the, rev- there's a big kickoff event with yes. Paul Rudd and a lot of yes. people from, uh, from Marvel, mm-hmm. including Anthony Mackie, our new Captain America. Yeah. Uh, but mm. people are posting a lot of videos, mm-hmm. a lot of pictures of the park. And what, what do you think? It looks really cool. It looks so cool. And we finally got to see the full on animatronic, um, or a- is it AI? No. Or is it just animatronic? It's, it's an, just animatronic. Right? Yeah, it's an animatronic Spidey. Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And flips through the air like a total boss. And then um, all the characters look amazing. All the cast members, they I mean, the resemblance is, it, it's uncanny. Like, it's its really, really cool looking. Yeah. Um, And all the video, oh, like the, uh, oh, oh. oh. The Dora Malaji. Yes. I, uh, I was like throwing up. It looks so cool. Um. And uh, yeah, no, I, I, ju- I just really want to go now. Yeah. I, I, I will blow all of my money. <laughs> and we'll see here, but we might be there in, in the fall of this year to, to kind of do an ep on it, which yeah, is exciting. Yeah, early winter maybe. With Andrew maybe. <gasps> but I'm, maybe. yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool to uh, experience the MCU and be in it. Uh, in, in 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 a park fully and fully immersive, fully too. immersive in like, a world. It's just it, it's so cool. There's uh there's a really fun uh, Ant Man kitchen. Yeah, there's an Ant Man kitchen that's there. There's stunt cool. shows. There's a magic show with Doctor Strange in the Sanctum oh, Sanctorum. I bet that looks so cool. The Spider Man ride is open, but and then um, soon during the next phase, there's going to be an Avengers team up ride 
which they say might be just on the level of Star Wars uh, uh, Rise of Resistance. That oh, nice. that ride yeah, that's yeah, at yeah. Uh, Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, so we really did that excited. too. That yeah. was intense. So it's going to be wild. And let us know. Hey, actually, if you're in Los Angeles, which a lot of our listeners are, yeah, uh, actually, h- hook us up. N- no, I'm just don't. <laughs> and you go to Disneyland. Let us know. Which, send us a message. Let us know yeah, how it is. Take give pictures. Give us the scoop. Give us the scoop. Give us a scoop. Actually, you know, this is kind of diving into our stats, but Los Angeles are number one city in terms of listeners. Oh, nice. So it makes what sense. Up, LA? A lot of Marvel people there. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, We've probably, been there. probably uh, 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 Captain America himself is listening. Okay. <laughs> All, all of them, all the new, the new one and the old. All right. Well, we are going to go and play, and we're going to listen to some of your listener mail and react to it. Again, we asked you all what you're most excited for and yes. also what your thoughts were on WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter mm-hmm. Soldier. Mm-hmm. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to start playing. We're going to play just a couple of the voicemails. Some of the audio of the other ones weren't great. So I'm going to play the best audio okay. of, of two voicemails. And then I'll just read some of the Instagram comments that that we had when we posted it up. Got it. But here we go. Here's our first. Uh, and you know what? We're going to listen first from a voicemail from Danny. Danny, my man. So here we go. <laughs> hey, guys. Finally, after such a long wait, we got new content. Every Friday morning, I was sitting ready for WandaVision, and I rewatched it again at night, just trying to get a grasp of what the hell was going on. And I really needed to talk about it instantly afterwards. I was calling my friends. I was saying the messages. What did we see? What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? And the show was really refreshing. After Endgame, we were all hyped up. We were wondering, how can they top this? Where is this going to go? How is this going to remain interesting? But one division made it really refreshing by offering something completely different. Paul Bettany is a comedic gem and it was mainly so much fun trying to figure out where this was going. In the end, a lot of people seemed disappointed at how the show ended, but I think it was fine. They left some things like Pietro unresolved because they will revisit this in the future. Marvel is the best at making movies or series retroactively better, uh, like Age of Ultron. I think a lot of people were disappointed because they read all possible and impossible theories already online. So that that means they really could not be surprised anymore because every possible outcome they'd already thought about. Um, but I still liked it. One of my favorite parts in One Vision was the fight between the visions. Uh, the action was really good. The, f- the phasing and, uh, and the result was perfect. The most vision thing ever. And obviously we didn't get the Magneto cameo as one as that because it would have been pre-DVD release and it would have erased all of Wanda's VHSs by accident. Uh, it is obvious that they are making series that you can skip and just watch the movies. Uh, they are great to let you know what the characters are up to between the movies, but they seem to not have real lasting cause. Maybe after you watch Captain America 4, you could watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier as a part of a prequel. But yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier then. It got us really hyped up already because that trailer looked class. It was high budget. It was like a blockbuster. It was like, wasn't like anything we'd seen in the year before. And uh, I think it didn't disappoint. The cast is extremely likable. The story is very worldly and down to earth. Really different from WandaVision. Uh, the storyline of Falcon, uh, we follow him. It makes him a deeper character. We finally get to know him, what drives him. The Walker is an intriguing anti-hero. You're really looking for reasons to hate him. Uh, Bucky's arc is also interesting. It has an interesting build-up. And honestly, he's potentially the most interesting character. There's a very dangerous side to him. But his story disappears to the background quickly. Though it is kind of resolved through Sam's story, I feel. But in the end, I enjoyed it. It didn't have the cliffhangers like WandaVision did. Um, but it had great moments. Uh, the final episode was great seeing Sam uh, in the new outfit as Captain. I found his speech was a bit long-winded. But it was the most Captain America thing we've ever seen in the MCU. Uh, highlights of the show are obviously uh, Zemo, who was a great Hannibal Lecter. I love the scenes of Bucky flirting with Sam's sister. It was so funny. He's such a snack. Walker quoting Lincoln. And Bucky saying, it's not great when it comes out of your mouth. Uh, really funny. Maybe it would have been a more interesting story life for Walker if they had admitted him from the final episode. And just gave him the post credit scene to reveal himself as the U.S. agent. 
it might have made them feel a little more dangerous to us, which would have been interesting in the future. But in the end, the whole series was more about the introduction of the characters. I guess the real resolve we will see in the movie. Uh, the real resolve uh, with Sharon Carter, U.S. agent. And, and that's just fine by me. Now I have some questions for you. Which characters are you really looking forward to in Phase 4? For me, I'm really hoping Charlie Cox gets a role as Daredevil. And if that doesn't happen, I'm also excited about seeing Kang the Conqueror. I think that's an interesting villain. And the second question... Dave Batista said this week, Guys of the Galaxy 3 might be the end for the Guardians. If you could save one of them, which one would you save? Well, that's it, guys. Thank you for the podcast. Hope that I can hear many more of them in the future. And talk to you guys later. Uh, well, that was it for me. Uh, thank you for the podcast. Hope to listen to many more in the future. Later. Mm. Oh my really good gosh. message. Love him Fantastic. so much. Gosh, he is so thorough and like so oh, love him. I yeah. love Danny. You gotta do yeah. Uh so there were a couple really cool tidbits. I think that yeah. his point about uh retroactively making the movies better, mm -hmm. that really is I think what these series are doing because yeah. you can definitely s not watch any of these mm -hmm. and probably enjoy the MCU fully. Yeah. Well, not fully, but 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 to a really uh, big extent. But you, you see this in Star Wars. Like, a lot of the movies are, um, you know, uh, 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 are polarizing. Some people hate them. Some people love them. Mm -hmm. But after The Mandalorian, people tend to like the prequels a little bit more for yeah, Star Wars. Even some of the, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so this is really a great way to dive into these characters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean... And, and and I know that he talked uh, some specific things about maybe the finales of both of the series that we've seen so far. And mm -hmm. I can't, I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure about this, but I feel like COVID played a pretty big role yeah. in kind of what, how, how these endings happen. I, I feel like, I feel the same way. And I think that we've discussed this in previous pods before, just because we saw a lot of the behind the scenes features um, on some of the Marvel stuff that doesn't, that Disney plus has available for, um, you know, subscribers or, um, whatever but uh because we saw how they had to really limit their crew and everybody had to get tested all the time and then also their um they went to those giant what are they it's like those domes that they had to shoot in do you know what i'm talking about yeah like a sound stage yes, like a big sound yes, stage yes. yeah uh-huh so i think that plays a big part in it too yeah, I think that that yeah, I mean, but I, I but I, I think Loki is a little bit different, so we'll have to see if this is a little bit more. Yeah, complete. I don't think but, it's going to be as restricted. Hey, yeah, let's answer this question: Who are you? What character are you most ex excited to see in Phase Four? Oof. Um. Ooh. Okay, so does Eternals does Eternals count as Phase Four? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I, so <laughs> this is also just me being um, a fangirl, but um, Kumail, my God, I think mm -hmm. he's one of my, uh, just because of the, uh, the gro <laughs> I'm going to say growth <laughs> of his muscles. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but also Angelina Jolie, um, just uh, the Eternals in general looks just, I'm, I'm, I think out of everything, that's probably the most that I'm excited to see just because it's going to be, it, it's Chloe Jow and I'm, I, I, I'm gonna throw up talking about it. Like I, I love the setup so much. It's I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, ja stoked. I, I, I maybe even more Jack Kirby ish, I guess, than than Guardians even to mm -hmm. see the. And it's a brand new cast of people. Mm -hmm. So you're meeting all kinds of like, new it's people. It's completely new, and the vibes feel new, and it's just I. Oh my god, I'm, I can talk about this forever now. It's, it's, I'm excited. I'm excited to see Doctor Strange, and I, this is going to come up later on, but Multiverse of Madness seems like it's going to be a really big uh, converging point, I guess, for, mm -hmm. for a lot of the next phase of MCU. Mm -hmm. But Doctor Strange is shaping up to be really important for that type of, 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 of world. Also, of course, Wanda. Uh, also, off. Guardians. Yeah. I mean, what? Because well, that's now, a, we, have, now we have. Let's answer his question. Yeah, who? Now would, we have. Is it old? It's old. Wait, no, yeah. Is it old? Is it old or is it new? No, it's, it's she because she died. Spoiler yeah. alert, right? It's new Gamora. Gamora. Yeah. Um, it's new Gamora, but it's old Gamora. 
right? It's mm-hmm. a previous version of Gamora. Yeah, it's a previous okay. version of Gamora who's now in <laughs> our like, timeline. Yeah, I'm just making sure I'm not messing that up. I'm like, wait, right? Because yeah. like, we and went Jam- back. James for Gunn her. is sh- <laughs> he's shooting that n- the newest Guardian soon, but mm-hmm. it, it is the the last one. The he's not making any more. So, he's making a Christmas special, I believe. But I Batista's just, not coming back. So who no. would you save if you could only save one of them? Ooh, um. If I could only save one, uh, I don't want to be basic and say Gamora. Well, I think it's kind of a hard one to pick because everyone's so great. Mantis is fantastic, and there's it kind of has expanded rather than shrunk. Yeah. I got my answer. I would save Groot's partially because Groot's already died in the but first is that Guardians. Sa- is that saving? Because he can always just be come back. Repotted, no, right? no, he or can't he- always be repotted. Oh, I guess if you burn him up, like, in, yeah. yeah okay, but that, I would save Groot. I think he's fantastic. There's no, uh, there's no other character like him in in the MCU. Okay. As much as like uh, Rocket is is unique and stuff, but Groot is like just a kind of ambivalent force of 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 goodness mm-hmm. who just says one thing mm-hmm. and I, I don't think there's anything like that there, and not to say that all of the other ones are similar to others but you know there's a lot of strong people in the mcu there's a lot of funny people in the mcu but there's I'm, not a lot of Groot characters i'm gonna go with rocket because he's so experienced he's actually really really smart even though he's very mischievous and you know good guy bad guy bad guy he's good funny guy. bradley cooper yeah he's oh i love bradley um but he's also just um he also has like this soft spot for the people that he keeps close. Yeah. So you know, even though he's like a brat and he is going to complain all the time, um, kind of like me, actually. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> You're a little raccoony. <laughs> um, you know that he's still going to sacrifice literally everything he has in order to his save family, yeah. his little family that they have. And, and he's done it before. And his... he's, he's a mastermind. He's very vocal. He's very, He communicates well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, probably Rocket. And you know what his uh, his uh, his character has we 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 know the least about him in terms of his yeah, backstory. backstory. So wise, there's yeah. a lot more to mine. We, we just know that we hear about it, but really we don't. We haven't like you know mm-hmm. this third one might be his movie. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of Gamora. Shine. We've gotten a lot of Star Lord. <laughs> yeah, we've even gotten like some of Groot. So yeah, this mm-hmm. might be his time to shine. Yeah, I would. Pro- yeah, probably Rocket. Just because I mean, yeah, nah, he's All a right. little gay. Let's listen to this. Is going to be our last auto- audio oh, thank you, Danny, voicemail. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so let's take a listen. Hi, Delphin Pod. It's Corey here. Um, I uh, just wanted to say that I loved watching uh, WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier these past few months. I thought WandaVision was an excellent um, look at an individual's uh, grief and trauma through the lens of the tropes of classic American sitcoms. And I think Falcon and Winter Soldier was a um, brilliant look at uh, the black experience in America as well as the uh, issues dealing with veterans and PTSD. Um, I think both series did excellent jobs, so, you know, doing their own thing in different ways. And I think that both are especially timely and uh, perfect for the moment that we are in, as both are dealing with the responses of, to a big global uh, event that uh, causes uh, uh, turmoil and tragedy across the world. And I thought they were brilliant in that one focused on one individual's personal uh, perspective on recovering from that and another looking at it from a societal systemic lens and I think both are brilliant and that you should all watch them now if you haven't watched them or watch them again because uh, Marvel is good at what they do and I'm excited to see uh, uh, Loki run around in time and uh, and wear a tie and, and punch people in the face a bit. Thank you. Sweet. Thanks, oh, Corey. Corey. You know, Corey's been on the pod, not this one, but our uh, sequel pod. Nice. He's Revenge been on sequel. before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very and cool. he's got a lot of good work. Well, find cool him. Guy. He has a really nice radio voice, too. Yeah. Love it. Mm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. There's something really timely about these shows. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, TV has such a fast turnaround. These mm-hmm. episodes were probably written months before mm-hmm. they were filmed sometimes maybe even weeks before mm-hmm. so maybe that's why it feels a little more relevant mm-hmm. with movies it sometimes feels like oh that yeah that was a thing that we were dealing with but Three it's too late yeah, yeah like you know it took a year to finance a year to cast yeah and by now it's like oh okay that's why when it, that's why when something hits it's like a t- it's it's special because yeah. it, in a movie yeah. like no man land this year did well mm-hmm. but that was that's an issue that's going to be around forever yeah, for the bit. stuff that mm-hmm. they look at but yeah i feel like 
this is a great uh, niche for for Marvel, at least for their shows. Yeah. To find kind of these uh, impactful and timely and important themes and, and, and put them into a Marvel show because... And something that they know that is going to reach a lot of families and a lot of individuals that may be definitely going through the exact same thing. I mean, Corey had great points about um, dealing with grief and how they take the perspective of an individual versus like a societal standpoint. Like I loved that he mentioned that because it's hundred percent true, hundred yeah. percent true. And we need to see both sides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, and then yeah, definitely find Corey. He's got a lot of pods. I'm sure. Thank you, Corey. Out there. Uh, but let me read. So I I did also ask our Instagram. <gasps> Insta, Insta. Insta. You know what? I didn't check our Twitter, but we'll just stick to Instagram. Um, <laughs> I'm not. We need an intern to do all this stuff. But Wait, le- where'd our intern go? <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> uh, we have you have to pay you have to pay them now, Sophia. I don't want to. Oh, you right. And, and I'm not saying that as like a complaining thing, but I don't want to get an intern and not pay them. Yeah. Like I, I if like, we get an intern, ooh, we're gonna pay them. Yeah. <laughs> like fifteen bucks an hour, twenty bucks an hour, or something. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, we are. Uh, I, I asked uh, some of our followers what they're most what they're most excited for in the next phase, and mm-hmm. you'll be kind of su- surprised that that there were basically only two answers. Oh, let me see. Multiple people uh, responded. Okay, I'm just going to read some of them, and I'm, I'm I know some of these people's names because it's in the bio, but I'm just going to read their Instagram handle instead, in, in case they don't want. Their, their actual full name, name and socials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know their social I securities too. I got yeah, you. do what you gotta do. Live so life. Hansel, you remember? You know, we know Hansel. <gasps> He's m- I know Multiverse Hansel. of Madness. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam Bromero, Doctor Strange. That's the same. Multiverse of Madness. K R B Z Mom. Uh, who uh, she? She actually met the Russo brothers. Nice. Um, Multiverse of Madness. I'm hoping it still has an element of horror to it. So Ooh. quite a few people who are excited for Multiverse of Madness, horror. which is what I was looking forward to. Very cool. And we do know it's scary, it's spooky because it's Sam Raimi. Yep, yep. He makes Evil Dead and mm-hmm. of course did Spider Man, but I, I I want it to be a little spooky. A little spooky spooky. And then Jay Abel's four and a couple other of our of our uh followers said Spider Man. Which oh. which is also kind of a multiverse movie. Yeah, because they're trying well, supposedly they're gonna just tie a bunch of it together. Long yeah. way home, yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited. It feels like we're getting to a point where we're gonna be diving into these different dimensions. Well, I mean, it's to that point now. Yeah. That's what Marvel's been planting <laughs> and these two the, the two movies that people want to see are coming out this year oh wait not not multiverse never mind. No, no, coming yeah, out no. soon yeah so we'll be able to an- see a lot of this and i'm sure they're going to give away more yeah as the time comes that's and, just how it is and hey thank you we're about to play our fun quiz right now but thank you so much Thanks, for guys. answering and sending these voicemails it means a lot to us and yeah Again, sorry that we couldn't get to the it took others. too long i'm sorry um yeah it took it took a little bit but also um it's just the audio. So yes. sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, but Sophia, just try again. Unlock your phone so I can airdrop this quiz to oh, you. Oh, gosh. I always mess this up. But we'll be talking to you a lot more about this next phase. Obviously, stuff about Loki. But, I mean, mm-hmm. we're going to get Black Widow in basically a month. So yeah. that's going to be kind of wild, too, to, to have another. Th- the first MCU movie since the pandemic. Since the pandemic. Since the pandemic. And we were going to get Florence Pugh. <laughs> so this is not a BuzzFeed <gasps> quiz. It's not a this BuzzFeed. This is a Beano. A so Beano. as Loki. Loki, of course, starting, mm-hmm. you know, Thor's brother. Yes. He's in the Thorverse, I guess, of the MCU. Uh, we're going to take a quiz called Which Thor Character Are You? Mm. And this is from Beano, B-E-A-N-O. Dot com. Beano. It's not a bean company. Not a bean. Which is interesting. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a bean company. <laughs> But we're going to take some, we're going to answer, there's 10 questions, mm-hmm. we're going to answer them, and it's going to tell us what Thor character we are. And hey, if one of us is Loki, we got a show coming out on Wednesday. Okay, so it says, which character are you, or Thor character are you? Um, are you a powerful Thor, are you all powerful Thor, or are you a scheming trickster god like Loki? Find out in which Thor character are you? Number one, mm. you've got a broken toenail, question mark. Did someone say nail? Hit it with my hammer. Ew, you pick it off and flick it off into the carpet. You chew it off Ugh. or you use nail scissors so it doesn't snag in my sock. Chew it off. <sighs> Interesting. I can imagine someone chewing off a broken toenail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two, what's your favorite snack? Dried cod, okay, cheese and onion crisps, someone else's sweets, or something healthy like an apple. Cheese and onion sounds good. 
Dry cod. That's classic uh, Norse food, right? Like yeah. up there in uh, where the, in the Viking land. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dry cod. And mm-hmm. there's a picture accompanying this, and it looks like thousands of upside down codfish. Yeah, <laughs> hanging all dried, out. and it's cold enough there that it'll last you all winter. Mm-hmm. Let us know. Anyone up there? Any Vikings listening? Do you want to rule- send us a cod? <laughs> S- send <laughs> send a us a cod. cod. You know what? Send us some send cod. Send us some cod Via to our mail, PO please. box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Number three, do you want to rule Asgard? Yes, may Odin grant me the wisdom to be just to be a just king or queen. Okay. Yes, at any cost. No, it sounds like a lot of effort. Or no, I don't believe it's actually a real place. Wow. Ooh, do you want to rule Asgard? This is a, must be an old quiz because Asgard, guess what? It's gone bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Uh, number, <laughs> number four, favorite football team. Ooh, I don't have a football. Football as in soccer. This is crazy because our number two country that listens to the pod, I'm, I'm giving out all the stats right now this episode, <laughs> is the UK. Nice. Um, and this, you better get right, Sophia. West Ham, Manchester, mm. UTD, Manchester. Manchester Sorry. United. Ma- okay. Uh, football is my worst enemy. Oh, my God, No. Or whoever is the underdog. Favorite Ooh. football team. Like or one. two Americans, soccer. Yeah. I um, mean, can you go wrong with picking Manchester United? I don't know. They're I like, like the, like they're the, like the like Patriots. Oh, I don't want to offend anyone, but they're like the Patriots of soccer. I like the whoever is the underdog. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. I um, picked Man U, baby. Num- <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> number five, your favorite way to eat with chopsticks, knife and fork, fingers, or with a massive hammer. Who, what can you eat with a hammer? Mm, you just smash it, and crush it, lick and on it. Just lick it. Okay. Just kidding. Um, I like using chopsticks. Chopsticks are fun. Okay. <gasps> or my fingies. I do fingies. It's fingers. Yeah. A uh, totally random question. Oh wait, is that? Okay, cool. Th- oh, and no, these are not, emojis. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Oh, well, it's number, not. Yeah, no. Well, we almost clicked on an ad. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a really good ad placement, right, honestly. Right? Okay, okay, so number six. Uh, you have been pranked. Now what? You have extreme rage. Oh my God, no. You prank You prank them back, but you prank bigger. Forgiveness or pranking is for children. Mm. When was the last time you were pranked? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... Oh, I mean, does does by my students count? Yeah. Okay, then yeah, then recently, probably like uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> mm. I get. I think I'm at the phase of my life where I'm the old man getting pranked. No, like, I used to scare you all the me. time. Oh yeah, you scared I would, me all the time. I, Emmanuel would come home at, like whatever time, and I would just be hiding around in our house, <laughs> and then uh, he would be like Sophia, and I oh, would have all the li- me, yeah. I would have all the lights off, and then I would just I would scare the shit out. But of But here's me. the thing: you're crying wolf, Sophia. If you ever get kidnapped, I'm not gonna call for help for like. A week because I'm going to think it's a prank. <laughs> so that's no, on you. And then watch it be a prank because I'm just that dedicated. <laughs> oh my God. A Gone Girl style. Spoiler alert. You're going to Gone Girl me? Yeah. Great. All right. Number seven out of 10. Uh, favorite music? Heavy metal, classic, K pop, or rap? K pop. You know, I just learned how many people are in BTS. I think we will. I, oh my gosh, yes. You showed, yeah, classic old man. Mm-hmm. But you showed me, and I actually like classical music. But <laughs> when, when you showed me uh, BTS, I was like, so who are these, all these people? Are these yeah. all the assistants? And you're like, no, this is. This is them. This is them. And I was like, <laughs> what? Yep. He freaked out. What does BTS stand for? Behind the scenes, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I forgot. Okay, eight out of ten. Your favorite sport. Uh, sorry, our our K pop stands are going to be upset. So yeah, now sorry I have about to that, look guys. It up. Eight out of ten. Your favorite sport: Olympic field events. Say, for example, hammer throwing, running. Oh my gosh, I can't. I love oh, running. Oh. I love running to exercise, but I can't run like for a long time. I get tired. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, what is that? Throwing, and then something with a ball. Javelin throwing. What's a javelin? It's like a spear. It's an Olympic sport. It's very old. It's a carryover from like the original Olympics. Olympics? That's cool. Kind of insane we still do that. Is it heavy? Yeah. Probably. Mm -hmm. So it's like shot put. All of that were feats of strength before. What is that? What's shot put? It's when you throw like a ball. It's a really heavy ball. Oh, like that metal one? Yeah, you'll see them like put it on like by their neck and and run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, Javelin is fun. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I've never, well, like, I don't do it competitively, but say, it looks when have fun. you done it? Oh, I do it all the time. For, <laughs> right. I do it to hunt for meat. Right. B- by the way, uh, BTS stands for. What's it stand for? Ba- oh, I'm going to not say it right, but it's Bangtan Sonye. Uh, oh, no. Stop. Sonyeon Dan. Stop. Ba- bang- 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 no. Sonyeon Dan. 
at literally meaning bulletproof boy scouts. Oh, cute. It, 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 the name signifies the group's desire to block out stereotypes, criticisms, Aww. and ex- expectations that aim on adolescents like bullets. Oh, I like that. S- yeah. That's nice. But now I want to listen to them tan, more. Bang, bang tan boys. Bang tan boys. Okay. Bang tan son you done. All right. Number nine out of ten. Favorite type of shark? This is a super random question. No, it's not. Because hammerhead. You get a hammer. Oh, I get it. Okay. Hammerhead shark, tiger shark, a whale shark, or a great white shark? We've seen three out of four of these. Yeah. We haven't seen a tiger shark, but we've seen yes, a great- Yes, we have. When? They, tiger sharks oh, are, are very yeah, common. Yeah, yeah. Are you Not common, about- but we've what? never seen a great white. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. That's they don't true. have we them in captivity. We were, we were gonna go um, shark cage diving in Australia, and then we didn't. Oh, the whale. There's a, there are we some did. whale sharks at the uh, Georgia Aquarium or, yeah, in Atlanta, and, mm-hmm. and, and we saw those guys. Although, yeah, you we know saw what? three of them. You know what I feel though yeah. after seeing them? What? Really cool. Okay, but maybe we shouldn't be having those in <laughs> captivity. I'm not <laughs> even joking tanks, because yeah. those things are huge. They're massive, and they probably need the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't mm-hmm. think they need to be. In a building. Yeah. And they say <laughs> there, and again, really great, you should go and support, you know, the, yeah, the e- like, ecotourism and stuff. Right. But they say that these whale sharks that are there were rescued from sh- from fishing nets. Mm-hmm. Well, but, so one of them, the, the biggest female, sh- her tail's like all janky, and so yeah. she has trouble swimming, supposedly. Some, but I'm like, well. And they, and they say, like, we, we don't know we how tried? big they grow. They're just going to keep growing. And I was like, well, this tank is not it, it, big enough it's, for it's three it's of limited. them. Yeah. All right, sorry. Free the we sharks. Digress, we free digress. the whales. <laughs> free the whale sharks. Yeah. Um, I don't. I kind of love hammerheads. You know, my very first time fishing, uh, I caught a hammerhead shark by mm. accident. Um, There's a lot of them in the Gulf. Hammerheads are very okay, frequent. Warm know, water sharks. Tiger sharks are the ones that eat people, right? They. It's funny because the picture they have here is not a tiger shark. <laughs> That's kind of nerdy, but um, it's not. Do they eat people? Yeah, they're pretty violent. Yeah. Um, and then great whites. Great whites are just chilling, but so are whale sharks. They jump out of the ocean. <gasps> oh, fun fact about the whale shark. Their throat is the size of a quarter. Like a quarter, right? Very mm-hmm. small. But they yeah. eat very tiny they things. They eat a bunch of So there, there's a picture of the tiger shark, and I just want to say that's a sand shark, not a tiger oh shark. Oh, my gosh. Emmanuel. But. Okay, 10 out of 10. Favorite holiday. Um, What? Oh, like place to stay. Bino is a British website, and yeah. So instead of so your favorite destination holiday, yeah. So holiday vacation, vacation. Basically. Yeah. Okay. So Las Vegas, a staycation, okay. a safari, or cen- center parks. Center parks. Hmm. Okay. For reference, do you want me to tell you what center parks is? I I mean maybe I, I'm imagining it as just like a big field park, like a woods. Yes. Okay. <laughs> they are giant woods. That's what I figured. Basically, Ir- Ireland and stuff like Ooh, that. Ooh, that's cool. Maybe mm-hmm. I should do that because de- uh, n- n- Vegas. Uh, There's a lot of different. Uh, I, have to, parks, I have to be. But... I have to be in the mood for Vegas. A staycation. Um, w- we've been there for the past year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and a safari. I would love to go on a safari, but I feel like safaris are really crowded right now. Mm. I, I will say they, well, it's 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 just not a good. Here's what I'll say about Center Parks: they're giant resorts in the UK. Oh, a lot of like indoor pools. There's outside stuff, but basically oh. it's like a fully, it's like a sandals Jamaica, but for the UK. Oh, let us know if that's wrong or if like, like no, I'm looking at it right nice. now. I'm booking it right now. I'm going to go to. I'm, oh gonna go to, gosh, I'm going no. to the Center Park in Warminster in the Wiltshire County. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is the only site to date um, to have uh, tram coaches pulled by Land Rovers. So. All right, I got mine. You did? I did. Did you pick Las Vegas? You no. freak. All right, I got mine. Okay. Wow. Okay, you go. You, tell I'm me gonna, who you I'm going to say the, do you want me to say the other things? Oh, yeah. So, uh, okay. yeah. So, we got our, our answers, I'm, but we're only going to be reading the clues. The descriptions Okay, first. here yeah. we go. Okay, so I'm inquisitive, smart, and full of integrity. Jane Foster. Integrity. Is that who you got? I got it, too. <laughs> we're both Lady Thor, spoiler alert. <laughs> wow. All right. Very cool. That's fun. And we learned a little bit about the UK mm-hmm. along the way, huh? Yeah, interesting. Well, that is our episode. So, Sophia, what do you have to plug? Oh, I'm going to say... Bless you. <laughs> wow. Sorry. The pressure got um, to you. Huh. Okay, so uh, my plugs. Sorry. Um, 
yeah, just the usual. Just thank you so much for listening to the pods and supporting us and everything that we do. If you want to support us even more or continue supporting us, you can definitely um, check out our Patreon. It's going to be Patreon dot com slash delphin pod d-e-l-f-i-n-p-o-d and um check out our other uh, shows that we got on here everything's all the guys are super cool all the shows are super cool um and then if you want to follow me on any social media everything's going to be at underscore simply sophie s-o-f-i-e-e yeah on patreon.com we will have exclusive episodes on marvel all of our star wars bad batch episodes star are wars. there right now before anywhere else and we're about to start recording a new season of Revenge of the Sequel. All those episodes are going to be on Patreon before they hit anyone else. And this month, we're sending stickers. And I think we might be sending uh, comic books to some of our listeners, oh, at least. yes, yes. Who, or at least patrons on Patreon. Mm-hmm. So head over there. You'll have time to, to, to get those, too. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you back here on Friday for our first Loki episode. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.